Chapters 5 through 8 of the Gospel according to Mark. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or how to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Gospel according to Mark, from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 5 through 8. Chapter 5. So they arrived at the opposite shore of the lake, in the country of the Gerasenes. At once, on his landing, there came from the tombs to meet him a man possessed by a foul spirit. This man lived among the tombs, nor could any one now secure him even with a chain. For many a time he had been left securely bound in fetters and chains, but afterwards the chains lay torn link from link, and the fetters in fragments, and there was no one strong enough to master him and constantly day and night he remained among the tombs or on the hills shrieking and mangling himself with sharp stones and when he saw jesus in the distance he ran and threw himself at his feet crying out in a loud voice what hast thou to do with me jesus son of god most high in god's name i implore thee not to torment me for he had said to him foul spirit come out of the man Jesus also questioned him, What is your name? He said, Legion, he replied, for there are a host of us. And he earnestly entreated him not to send them away out of the country. Feeding there on the mountain slope was a great herd of swine. So they besought Jesus, Send us to the swine, they said, so that we may enter into them. He gave them leave, and the foul spirits came out and entered into the swine, and the herd, about two thousand in number, rushed headlong down the cliff into the lake, and were drowned in the lake. The swineherds fled and spread the news in town and country, so the people came to see what it was that had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they beheld the demoniac, quietly seated, clothed, and of sane mind, the man who had had the legion, and they were awe-stricken, and those who had seen it told them the particulars of what had happened to the demoniac, and all about the swine. Then they began entreating him to depart from their district. As he was embarking, the man who had been possessed asked permission to accompany him, but he would not allow it. Go home to your family, he said, and report to them all that the Lord has done for you, and the mercy he has shown you. So the man departed, and related publicly everywhere in the ten towns all that Jesus had done for him, and all were astonished. When Jesus had recrossed in the boat to the other side, a vast multitude came crowding to him, and he was on the shore of the lake. When there came one of the wardens of the synagogue, he was called Jair, who on beholding him threw himself at his feet, and besought him with many entreaties. My little daughter, he said, is at the point of death. I pray you come and lay your hands upon her, that she may recover and live. And Jesus went with him, and a dense crowd followed him, and thronged him on all sides. Now a woman who for twelve years had suffered from hemorrhage, and had undergone many different treatments under a number of doctors, and had spent all she had without receiving benefit, but on the contrary growing worse, heard of Jesus. And she came in the crowd behind him, and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. In a moment, the flow of her blood ceased, and she felt in herself that her complaint was cured. Immediately Jesus, well knowing that healing power had gone from within him, turned round in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the multitude pressing you on all sides? His disciples exclaimed. And yet you ask, Who touched me? But he continued looking about to see the person who had done this, until the woman, frightened and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and threw herself at his feet, and told him all the truth. Daughter, he said, your faith has cured you. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. While he is yet speaking, men come from the house to the warden and say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the rabbi further? But Jesus, overhearing the words, said to the warden, Do not be afraid, only have faith. 
and he allowed no one to accompany him except Peter and the brothers James and John. So they come to the warden's house. Here he gazes on a scene of uproar, with people weeping aloud and wailing. He goes in. Why all this outcry and loud weeping? he asks. The child is asleep, not dead. To this their reply is a scornful laugh. He, however, puts them all out, takes the child's father and mother and those he has brought with him, and enters the room where the child lies. Then, taking her by the hand, he says to her, Talitha, comb, that is to say, Little girl, I command you to wake. Instantly the little girl rises to her feet and begins to walk, for she was twelve years old. They were at once beside themselves with utter astonishment, but he gave strict injunctions that the matter should not be made known, and directed them to give her something to eat. Chapter 6 Leaving that place, he came into his own country, accompanied by his disciples. On the Sabbath he proceeded to teach in the synagogue, and many, as they heard him, were astonished. Where did he acquire all this? they asked. What is this wisdom that has been given to him? And what are these marvelous miracles which his hands perform? <laughs> is not this the carpenter Mary's son, the brother of James and Joses, Jude and Simon? And do not his sisters live here among us? So they turned angrily away. But Jesus said to them, There is no prophet without honor except in his own country, and among his own relatives, and in his own home and he could not do any miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few who were out of health and cured them. And he wondered at their unbelief, so he went round the adjacent villages, teaching. Then summoning the twelve to him, he proceeded to send them out by twos, and gave them authority over the foul spirits. He charged them to take nothing for the journey except a stick, no bread, no bag, and not a penny in their pockets, but to go wearing sandals. And do not, he said, Put on an extra undergarment. Wherever you enter a house, make it your home till you leave that place. But wherever they will not receive you or listen to you, when you leave, shake off the very dust from under your feet to bear witness concerning them. So they set out and preached in order that men might repent. Many demons they expelled, and many invalids they anointed with oil and cured. King Herod heard of all this, for the name of Jesus had become widely known. And he kept saying, John the baptizer has come back to life, and that is why these miraculous powers are working in him. Others asserted that he was Elijah. Others again said, He is a prophet, like one of the great prophets. But when Herod heard of him, he said, The John, whom I beheaded, has come back to life. For Herod himself had sent and had had John arrested, and had kept him in prison in chains for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had repeatedly told Herod, You have no right to be living with your brother's wife. Therefore Herodias hated him and wished to take his life, but could not. For Herod stood in awe of John, knowing him to be an upright and holy man, and he protected him. After listening to him he was in great perplexity, and yet he found a pleasure in listening. At length Herodias found her opportunity. Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet to the nobles of his court, and to the tribunes and the principal people in Galilee, at which Herodias's own daughter came in and danced, and so charmed Herod and his guests that he said to her, Ask me for anything you please, and I will give it to you. He even swore to her, Whatever you ask me for I will give you, up to half my kingdom. She at once went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the baptizer, she replied. The girl immediately came in in haste to the king and made her request. My desire is, she said, that you will give me here and now on a dish the head of John the Baptist. Then the king, though intensely sorry, yet for the sake of his oaths and of his guests, would not break faith with her. He at once sent a soldier of his guard with orders to bring John's head. So he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head on a dish and gave it to the young girl, who gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard of it, they came and took away his body and laid it in a tomb. When the apostles had reassembled round Jesus, they reported to him all they had done and all they had taught. Then he said to them, Come away, all of you, to a quiet place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, so that they had no time even for meals. 
Accordingly they sailed away in the boat to a solitary place apart. But the people saw them going, and many knew them. And coming by land they ran together there from all the neighboring towns, and arrived before them. So when Jesus landed he saw a vast multitude, and his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were like sheep which have no shepherd, and he proceeded to teach them many things. By this time it was late, so his disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the hour is now late. Send them away, that they may go to the farms and villages near here, and buy themselves something to eat. Give them food yourselves, he replied. Are we, they asked, to go and buy two hundred shillings worth of bread and give them food? How many loaves have you? he inquired. Go and see. So they found out and said, Five, and a couple of fish. So he directed them to make all sit down in companies on the green grass and they sat down in rows of hundreds and of fifties. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and lifting his eyes to heaven, he blessed the food. Then he broke the loaves into portions, which he went on handing to the disciples to distribute, giving pieces also of the two fish to them all. All ate and were fully satisfied, and they carried away broken portions enough to fill twelve baskets besides pieces of the fish. Those who ate the bread were five thousand adult men, Immediately afterwards he made his disciples go on board the boat and cross over to Bethsaida, leaving him behind to dismiss the crowd. He then bade the people farewell, and went away up the hill to pray. When evening was come, the boat was halfway across the lake, while he himself was on shore alone. But when he saw them distressed with rowing, for the wind was against them, towards morning he came towards them, walking on the lake, as if intending to pass them. They saw him walking on the water, and thinking that it was a spirit, they cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. He, however, immediately spoke to them. There is no danger, he said. It is I. Be not alarmed. Then he went up to them on board the boat, and the wind lulled. And they were beside themselves with silent amazement, for they had not learned the lesson taught by the loaves, but their minds were dull. Having crossed over, they drew to land in Gennesaret and came to anchor. But no sooner had they gone ashore than the people immediately recognized him. Then they scoured the whole district and began to bring him the sick on their mats wherever they heard he was, and enter wherever he might, village or town or hamlet. They laid their sick in the open places, and entreated him to let them touch were it but the tassel of his robe, and all who ever touched him were restored to health. Chapter 7 then the Pharisees, with certain scribes who had come from Jerusalem, came to him in a body. They had noticed that some of his disciples were eating their food with unclean, that is to say unwashed, hands. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, being as they are zealous for the traditions of the elders, never eat without first carefully washing their hands, and when they come from market they will not eat without bathing first. And they have a good many other customs which they have received traditionally and cling to, such as the rinsing of cups and pots and of bronze utensils, and the washing of beds. So the Pharisees and scribes put the question to him, Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders and eat their food with unclean hands? <sighs> Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, he replied. As it is written, This people honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far away from me. But idle is their devotion while they lay down precepts which are mere human rules. You neglect God's commandment. You hold fast to men's traditions. <laughs> Praiseworthy indeed, he added, to set up not God's commandment in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And again, he who curses father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, It is a korban, that is, a thing devoted to God, whatever it is which otherwise you would have received from me, and so you no longer allow him to do anything for his father or mother, thus nullifying God's precept by your tradition which you have handed down, and many things of that kind you do. Then Jesus called the people to him again. Listen to me, all of you, he said, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which entering him can make him unclean, but it is the things which come out of a man that make him unclean. After he had left the crowd and gone indoors, his disciples began to ask him about this figure of speech. 
have you also so little understanding he replied do you not understand that anything whatever that enters a man from outside cannot make him unclean because it does not go into his heart but into his stomach and passes away ejected from him by these words jesus pronounced all kinds of food clean what comes out of a man he added that it is which makes him unclean for from within out of men's hearts their evil purposes proceed fornication theft murder adultery covetousness wickedness deceit licentiousness envy reviling pride reckless folly all these wicked things come out from within and make a man unclean then he rose and left that place and went into the neighborhood of tyre and sidon here he entered a house and wished no one to know it but he could not escape observation forthwith a woman whose little daughter was possessed by a foul spirit heard of him and came and flung herself at his feet she was a gentile woman a syrophoenician by nation and again and again she begged him to expel the demon from her daughter let the children first eat all they want he said it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs true sir she replied and yet the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps for those words of yours go home he replied the demon has gone out of your daughter so she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone returning from the neighborhood of tyre he came by way of sidon to the lake of galilee passing through the district of the ten towns here they brought to him a deaf man that stammered on whom they begged him to lay his hands so jesus taking him aside apart from the crowd put his fingers into his ears and spat and moistened his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and said to him ephatha that is open and the man's ears were opened and his tongue became untied and he began to speak perfectly then jesus charged them to tell no one but the more he charged them all the more did they spread the news far and wide the amazement was extreme he succeeds in everything he attempts they exclaimed he even makes deaf men hear and dumb men speak chapter eight about that time there was again an immense crowd and they found themselves with nothing to eat so he called his disciples to him my heart yearns over the people he said for this is now the third day they have remained with me and they have nothing to eat if i were to send them home hungry they would faint on the way some of them having come a great distance where can we possibly get bread here in this remote place to satisfy such a crowd answered his disciples how many loaves have you he asked seven they said so he passed the word to the people to sit down on the ground then taking the seven loaves he blessed them and broke them into portions and proceeded to give them to his disciples for them to distribute and they distributed them to the people they had also a few small fish he blessed them and he told his disciples to distribute these also so the people ate an abundant meal and what remained over they picked up and carried away seven hampers of broken pieces the number fed were about four thousand then he sent them away and at once going on board with his disciples he came into the district of dalmanutha the pharisees followed him and began to dispute with him asking him for a sign in the sky to make trial of him heaving a deep and troubled sigh he said why do the men of today ask for a sign in solemn truth i tell you that no sign will be given to the men of today so he left them went on board again and came away to the other side now they had forgotten to take bread nor had they more than a single loaf with them in the boat and when he admonished them see to it be on your guard against the yeast of the pharisees and the yeast of herod they explained his words to another by saying we have no bread he perceived what they were saying and he said to them what is this discussion of yours about having no bread do you not yet see and understand are your minds so dull of comprehension you have eyes can you not see you have ears can you not hear and have you no memory when i broke up the five loaves for the five thousand men how many baskets did you carry away full of broken portions twelve they said and when the seven for the four thousand how many hampers full of portions did you take away seven they answered 
Do you not yet understand? He said. And they came to Bethsaida, and a blind man was brought to Jesus, and they entreated him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the arm and brought him out of the village, and spitting into his eyes, he put his hands on him and asked him, Can you see anything? He looked up and said, I can see the people. I see them like trees, only walking. Then for the second time he put his hands on the man's eyes, and the man, looking steadily, recovered his sight and saw everything distinctly. So he sent him home and added, Do not even go into the village. From that place Jesus and his disciples went to the villages belonging to Caesarea Philippi. On the way he began to ask his disciples, Who do people say that I am? John the Baptist, they replied, but others say Elijah, and others that it is one of the prophets. Then he asked them pointedly, But you yourselves, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, answered Peter, and he strictly forbade them to tell this about him to anyone. And now for the first time he told them, The Son of Man must endure much suffering, and be rejected by the elders and the high priests and the scribes, and be put to death, and after two days rise to life. This he told them plainly, whereupon Peter took him and began to remonstrate with him. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, adversary, he said, for your thoughts are not God's thoughts, but men's. Then calling to him the crowd and also his disciples, he said to them, If anyone is desirous of following me, let him ignore self and take up his cross and so be my follower. For whoever is bent on securing his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the good news will secure it. Why, what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what could a man give to buy back his life? Everyone, however, who has been ashamed of me and of my teachings in this faithless and sinful age, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The end of chapters 5 through 8 of the Gospel according to Mark from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.